Hi everybody, my name is Melissa Chipman. Um, I'm a professor at Syracuse University and this is my collaborator in the photo here, Mark Lara at the University of Illinois. Um, and we're developing educational activities for K through 12 students using drone technology or unmanned aerial vehicle technology to teach science concepts in the classroom. Um, the upper right is a little schematic of how we think about our research associated with our project, um, thinking about landscape changes like wildfire and permafrost degradation and how those impact biogeochemistry and how they're impacted by climate warming and climate change, and using things like a combination of remote sensing data and field work in order to understand those changes and their impacts on vegetation. And so we were really excited to be able to uh, contribute some of the types of field techniques that we use as scientists in the field in order to, to train students on how to observe and understand their landscape. Um, and so using things like drones in the classroom is a, a really powerful way to deliver both skill-based and STEM-based material to students. So in this project, um, for the uh, high schools that we're working with, we're providing them with a drone and some training associated with that. And this particular drone that we're using has a camera integrated in it. So just like drones that you can put an iPhone or some sort of camera um, and fly around and take pictures, this camera does the same thing, except it also takes imagery and gets information in the near infrared part of the electromagnetic spectrum. So you get a little more information about what's going on. And so associated with that, in terms of the skill-based activities, are learning to use the software. How do you pre-program a flight path? When you get the imagery back, how do you um, project it? How do you stitch images together if you've taken multiple images on the landscape. So there's a skill-based component, but the STEM-based component is really the exciting part because using this technology, you can do things like hypothesis testing. For example, if you use the imagery to calculate things like the normalized difference vegetation index, right, you might be able to come up with hypotheses about plant health. Do they look different or do they have different spectral signatures during green up versus when they lose their leaves? Or you might take your students on field trips and look at things like um, stressed vegetation versus greener vegetation. How does it look uh, across the electromagnetic spectrum? So having this imagery can teach a lot of different scientific concepts. But for me, the most important part about using this type of um, uh, skill-based and STEM-based learning and, and field-based activities for collecting data is that the students are doing it in the communities that they live in. So areas that might have experienced fires in the past or are showing vegetation change or that experience snow melt and snow thaw. Does that happen differently in areas that are degrading from permafrost degradation versus areas that aren't? And so by um, by empowering students to use this technology to learn science, they're doing that in the communities that they care about. And so there's also a component of storytelling associated with it. So when you scale up to things like Landsat data and giant remote sensing data from space, um, you get a sense of where that data is coming from, but you do it in your own homes. So anyway, here's my email. Thank you so much uh, for listening to this.